the brain does not experience anything directly. It learns indirectly. It relies on the senses <coughs> to send information to the brain and the moment the brain recreates what the senses have sent the brain. You must remember it's complicated. That's why you often hear about sensory integration difficulties. Have you ever come across that term? Mm -hmm. Okay. So sensory integration difficulties mean that the information from the different senses come in different streams into the brain. And there comes a time when the brain needs to overlap the information from all the senses so one perception is formed in the brain. So if I speak to you, hello, five things in you. What are you seeing? My mouth is saying something but the sound is not correlating with my mouth. It confuses the brain. That's in a way exactly what sensory non-integration or a child with sensory integration issues the sound and the image doesn't reach the brain at the same time in the same harmony so they come into the brain at different times so it doesn't create one perception it's a mouth perception and a sound perception the senses is underdeveloped? Can be because one of the senses is underdeveloped, kind of very good comment. It can also be because the one sense feeds directly into the dominant side of the brain and the other sense has a bit of a longer pathway. What's the role of the, yeah, of the yeah, middle ear yeah, you see? Okay, so now when there's a problem with fluid, if a person has flu or a blocked <coughs> nose that I, like I do at the moment, Chances are great that there's fluid in the middle ear. So immediately, what does it do? It distorts the sound. Okay? It distorts the sound. So immediately, it makes your interpretation of sound a little bit more difficult. If the middle ear has fluid, because it's, um, sound is so important in sensing where you are in direct, because sound is as touch, it's touch in a way. It helps you to orientate yourself in space. So it can contribute to children feeling disoriented and with that it's very difficult to overlap the stuff because you're getting information from all different directions. Okay, so it just makes it so much harder for the secretary in the inner <coughs> ear to overlap the information to make sense of what's going on. Can that make a does the overlapping from all the senses, does it take place in the brain or in the inner ear? See, we don't really know. And this is very important that we must acknowledge that. In our model, the integration happens in the vestibular system. Lots of people say we're completely wrong, it doesn't happen there, it happens in the brain. Frankly, we don't know. We don't know, but if we look at the... Okay, I just need to say something. This, what we're doing right now, is not what you're going to do in a normal teaching. This is an advanced mindfulness instructor bit at the moment, okay? Okay, I'm going to continue, but I just want you to know you don't go to this depth, you're going to confuse the living daylights out of them. We haven't even con um, talked about the different senses, so we won't be doing, no, 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 it's perfect. We won't be doing this in your normal training. But let's continue, because this is lacking. Is it? Yeah. 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 Okay, so. What we know of the vestibular system, it has something to do with direction and it has something to do with sequencing. Well done, Marley. Okay, so if anything has anything to do with direction or sequencing, the vestibular system is involved. Okay, now, if I see something there, but my ear is hearing, I'm hearing a tick tick. Clock, I'm probably hearing the clock on the side. Okay, my brain has to put this stuff together. But if my vestibular system is slightly faulty, it's not going to be able to overlap them. And it's based on that that we say sensory integration is a function of the vestibular system. Because it has to do with direction, and it has to do with sequencing. Um, focus group, and whose group did that happen? That was Almery's group. In Elmery's group, there was a very um, um, difficult question um, because the person questioned, how can we say 
the vestibular system. It was an occupational therapist. And she said, how can we say the vestibular system is involved with um, sensory integration? Because we say, okay, I'm still on AMMI stuff. Okay, remember information flows in through your senses, up to the emotional part, cognitive part, down through the emotional part, back down through the vestibular system, system en route out to the muscle. So, so we say on the way up, information, um, sensory integration, occurs in the inner ear, so the vestibular system is involved in sensory integration. On its way down, the vestibular system is involved in muscle tone. Yeah. You with me there? Yeah. Yeah. And she said to me, no, it, it's not how it works. And I said, it's okay. I'll tell you why we say that's how it works, but remember we work with a functional model. We do not work with an anatomical model. We work with a functional model. What's the difference? Physiology and anatomy tells you exactly these are the bones, these are the muscles, that's how they attach, blah, blah, blah. It's facts. Nobody really knows. Do you think... We can figure out God's creations. The arrogant one. We don't really know. But a functional model says this is a model of how things seem to work. And it makes perfect sense. Every time we use the same model, people say it makes sense. So a model can't be too sorry, it seems like it's okay. So I said to her, okay, let me tell you how we got to our model. Would you agree that the vestibular system is involved with a sense of direction and sequencing? She said, yes. Okay. And I said, does sensory integration have anything to do with, with direction and sequencing? She said, absolutely. I said, well, that's why the vestibular system... And she said, no, it, it makes perfect sense. But I said, we just need to <coughs> reason this stuff out. 